Hello and welcome to this tutorial. It's the first tutorial in four for the Google PD sessions for Hoover High School. We're going to jump right into it and get into our presentation. So this slide, I do need for you to complete this survey. You can either scan the QR code or what might be easier right now on your computer is to simply type into the address bar of any search engine, internet search engine, snap.view forward slash du1e, snap.view forward slash du1e. It's very important that you complete this survey because it will be used for the next, for this session and for the next three sessions after this one. But we're going to go ahead and jump in and you can complete that survey on your own time. We're going to go ahead and jump into uh, session one. Great. Required PD just what I always wanted, right? Believe me, I've been in education for 22 years and I've sat through PD sessions that I wish I had never been in um, and I had a hundred other things I needed to get done and I don't like the word required. It just makes me angry. You know, I love chocolate but if someone said you are required to eat chocolate then I would refuse to eat chocolate just because someone told me I had to do it. So the word required puts me off a little and I know it does other people so I apologize that this is a required PD. However, let's talk about why um, this is a required PD. First off, our lovely Brian Phillips was interviewed by eWeek and gives us a little insight that we are about to replace 5,000 Apple iPads that are nearing the end of their service lives with Chromebooks. Well, the things that work on the iPad aren't going to work on the Chromebook. So what we need to do is become device agnostic so that we don't have to go, oh my gosh, I just learned how to use this device and now you're changing it and I had to learn something brand new. Well, the point of these sessions, this session and the next three sessions this school year are to help you to become device agnostic so that it doesn't matter what device we use you'll be good to go no matter what the kids bring into the classroom as we eventually move into a bring your own device environment. Also in an email I just read this past weekend our wonderful Dr. Ron Dodson sent out a um, message and in that message he said you can see here highlighted in the pink area that um, required technology apps should be device agnostic wherever possible to support future growth in BYOD, bring your own device. So that's the point of this um, PD session and the next three PD sessions is getting you up to date and moving away from iPad exclusive apps to device agnostic technologies to be, that can be used with Chromebooks and any other devices including iPads. So again, required PD, uck. However, I'd rather sit in a required PD than to plan all summer for lessons on my iPad and then realize, oh my gosh, we're not using iPads anymore, we're using Chromebooks. And now I can't use the plans I spent my whole summer planning. I'd much, much rather sit in a required PD than to um, end up in a situation like this. And so that's the point of these professional development sessions. So welcome to Google Drive 101. Again, it's not about the device. Um, teachers have always been upset whenever the device has changed from writing with chalk and slate to pencils. Uh, there was complaints about that. Um, going from quill pens and ink jars to using ballpoint pens, there was a big uproar about that. But remember, it's not about the device. It's about empowering students. And so we're going to get away for, from that whole device debacle. Okay. It is, though, about SAMR and meeting those SAMR um, different 
levels of SAMR and moving from the shallow end into the transformative deep end. And we're going to start in the shallow end. We're going to move in, but I want to show you this. I'm going to click on this picture. And I want to show you this great site. This is Chromebooks in Plainville, but over here on the right-hand side, you see SAMR scenarios. And I know that figuring out, well, what can I do to get to one of those higher SAMR scenarios in my classroom? What I love about this is that they are sharing, this school district has shared with us um, different types of lesson plans and then told you what type of SAMR, um, where in SAMR it falls. And so I would encourage you to come back sometime and take a look at this so that you can see, and it might, um, you know, polar bears were in high school, that's not really going to be our thing, but maybe there's something they're doing with polar bears, like using Google Forms, that you could do in your classroom to then reach that modification level or other things, redefinition levels, redefinition, there may be something that will um, trigger something in your lesson plans that help you to know what to do with that SAMR model. So that is something I put in there for you that I think would be great to go back and review at a later time. All right, tomorrow's illiterate will not be the person who can't read, it'll be the person who has not learned how to learn. One thing we as teachers need to do is back off and let the students start asking the questions and coming up with the answers because they have to know how to learn. We're training students for jobs that don't even exist yet. So feeding them information and having them regurgitate it back out to us is not enough anymore. Students have to know how to explore, come up with the questions and find the answers and learn how to learn. And so I'm hoping that this is what we're going to be moving towards. But let's look at Google Drive. We're going to learn about Google Drive today because it's device agnostic. We can use it on our desktop, on our laptops, on our iPhones, on our tablets, on our Android devices. It doesn't matter. We can use it across the board and that's what being device agnostic is. One reason I love Google Drive is because I never had to worry about my files. I've never lost anything that I've put into my Google Drive. I've lost USB um, memory sticks. I've had them become corrupt. I've had them stolen. Um, my daughter called me one time when she was in college, had a big final. She had typed everything on her computer. Her computer crashed and she's, Mom, what do I do? I'm like, well, did you do your work on Google Drive? No, I just had it saved on my computer. Well, guess what? All your stuff is gone. If she had done it on Google Drive, like I had told her, <laughs> Of course, children never listen. She would have had it. And then also you see over here I have a picture of our um, servers in our district. I have been in a district where the servers were infected and I've lost everything. Well, I didn't lose everything. Everyone who was using the servers lost it. I had all my stuff on Google Drive. I didn't lose my information. So, you know, even servers can be infected and you can lose your files. So I would say if you don't want to be in the situation where you lose a file, use Google Drive. All right, we also here in Alabama want to get our, t our students college and career ready. Well, seven out of eight Ivy League institutions use Google and Google Apps and 72 of the top 100 universities in the U United States use Google and Google Apps. So if we want to get our students college and career ready, Google is one of the things we need to be exposing them to. So we're going to get started. I know most of you have iPads with you because we're an iPad school right now. We haven't transitioned yet to the Chromebooks. So I'm going to take you through using your iPad with Google um, Drive and Chrome. Now, you should have already, before you came to this PD session, downloaded the Google Drive app and the Chrome app. So we're going to start with the Google Drive app. So click on the Google Drive app icon. You will most likely see a window like this. We're going to click on the Get Started button. When you click on that, you will want to sign in to your Hoover City Schools account. So that would be your first initial last name at hcs-students.net and then your password. 
Well, if you have not already set up your Google account with your hcs-students.net account, your password's going to be capital W, E L C O M E, the numeral one, and an exclamation point. Okay? So your username, the same username you log into your computer with, at hcs-students.net. And if this is the first time you are logging into this account, you will want to type in this password right here, capital W in welcome, the numeral one, and an exclamation point, and then click sign in. And those of you who are watching this, if I'm too fast, click pause, catch up, and then click play again. And now you can rewind and fast forward as much as you need. You may come across a page that looks like this. Go ahead and enter those letters that drive me insane and click I accept. Now you need to change your password. Personally, I like my password to be the same password I use to log into my school computer. That way I don't have another password to remember. But this password's up to you. Whatever you want it to be, just don't forget what it is. So type in your new password and click Change Password. And now you should see a page that looks like this. Of course, it's not going to look just like this because I have files in mine and you don't have files in yours yet if you have not used your account. But you should see something similar to this. If you don't, let me know. <laughs> and now I want you to notice over onto the right-hand side in the top, you'll see a little plus sign. This is how you can create a new document. This is similar to Microsoft Word or a new spreadsheet similar to Microsoft Excel. Or you can create a new folder. You can also upload photos or videos from your iPad. Or you can actually use your camera to take a picture and it will automatically load in to your Google Drive account. Now, let's see how this looks going through Chrome. And you're thinking, well, if I have the Google Drive app, why do I need to go through it in Chrome? Because if you want to print to the WEPA printers, you're going to, it will not let you do it from here. You'll have to do it from the Google Chrome. So let's do this through Google Chrome. Click on the Google Chrome icon. We're going to click on Sign In in the top right-hand corner. We're going to sign in. Again, if this is your first time, if you have never signed in before, you're going to have to use that welcome. But if you just did that with us when we did drive, then use the new password that you came up with. Okay, and remember, we're signing in here with your username, the at hcs-students, with an s, students.net, and then that new password that you came up with. And then sign in. Now, how do we get to Google Drive from here? Because I don't see Google Drive anywhere. You're going to click on this button that says More, and a drop-down will pop up. And here you have access to tons of stuff, but we're going to focus right here on Google Drive. So click where it says Google Drive. And this is what your page is going to look like. Now, I don't especially care for the look of this page, so what I'm going to show you next is just my personal preference of how I like to work within uh, Google Drive through the Chrome browser app on my iPad. So what I like to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and click where it says desktop so that it looks more like it would on a laptop or a desktop computer. And then I click continue to desktop version. And y'all, if you want to print to WEPA or your students had to print to WEPA, you will have to use the desktop version to do this. So this is another reason why I'm showing it to you. And then this is what yours will look like because um, you don't have any files yet. But if you did have some files already, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so when you get there, this is what it's going to look like. All right, and how does it look on your desktop or on a laptop? So again, there's lots of browsers you can choose from, but it's wise to use the Google Chrome browser if you're going to use Google products like Google Drive. It was made to work together. Um, Internet Explorer doesn't like Google, and so if you go in through Internet Explorer, 
you're going to have problems using your Google Drive. So let's use what was made to work together and click on the Google Chrome internet browser on your desktop or laptop to access Drive. So you will sign in to your Google account. There should be a little button up there that says sign in. You'll sign in to your Google account, your username at hcs-students.net and that password that you came up with. Once you're signed in, you should see a box that looks like this. Okay. Now on Chromebooks, you're not going to see this because you're already in, um, using Google Chrome. But if you aren't using Google Chrome, you might want to install it. You might have to install it if you don't have Google Chrome already on your computer. It just works better if you use Google Chrome with Google Drive. So how do you find Google Drive here? Click on these little dots, and when you click on those little dots there, you'll have a menu pop up, and you're going to click on where it says Drive. Now, now that we're into Google Drive, this will apply um, to your iPad as well, but really it's going to work better on a laptop or a desktop than on your iPad. You're very limited with what you can do with Google Drive on your iPad. You can do, you can take notes um, like on a Word document and you can do an Excel spreadsheet, but there's not much else you can do. So it's great. Um, it can be used for note taking, writing research papers, and things like that. Um, but if you get more advanced, um, it's just better to use something like a laptop or a desktop, which is why I'm excited about moving to Chromebooks because there's more that you can do than with the iPad. iPad limits you. So don't think, oh my gosh, now I had to learn a whole brand new thing. I'm going to have to remake all my lesson plans, all my tests, everything else that I've been doing. No, don't worry about that. You don't have to um, recreate everything. The great thing about this is that you can upload all the files that you already have. You can upload files from your USB drive. You can upload files from your school server network drive, your T drive. You can upload files from your desktop. You can upload files from wherever you have them saved right into your Google Drive. And then you don't have to worry about a memory stick or you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm not at school. I can't get to my T drive. You can always get to your files anywhere you have access to the internet with Google Drive. So how do you do this? You're going to upload the files that you already have existing. Now you can upload one file at a time or if you're using Chrome as your internet browser you can upload entire folders at a time. Now with our school district you have 30 I think it's a uh, gigabytes of storage space. Um, but if you actually create or convert your documents to Google Docs, you have unlimited storage space. Uh, that beats the heck out of um, Dropbox where you only have two gigabytes of space. So I love this. Now, you will be asked, hopefully, um, you always want to confirm the settings before each upload. You can choose to convert your documents to Google Docs. I wouldn't do that to begin with because some, some transfer fine, others don't transfer perfectly. So I would probably take the mark out of that for right now and let it upload as a normal Word document or a normal PowerPoint presentation and then you can change it into a Google Doc. Now, here's the catch to that. When you don't convert it to a Google Doc, you're using up storage space. You only have 30 gigabytes. That's a lot but you only have that much and you can't edit those documents. But in a later session we will show you how to then convert it from Word inside of Google Docs into a, a doc format so that then you can edit. So right now I'm just telling you you might not want to do that because it doesn't always transfer over um, beautifully. And then click Start Upload and that's how you would upload documents that you already have that exist and I can go over that with you individually if you need that or go into more, more detail. Now what I'd recommend though from now on start creating your documents in Google Drive. When we have Chromebooks we're not going to have Microsoft because 
you can't install programs like Microsoft onto a Chromebook because you can't download, you can't install, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're going to need to, you will want to get used to <laughs> using Google Drive to create your um, documents that you would normally make with Microsoft Word or PowerPoints that you would normally make with Microsoft PowerPoint. You want to get used to using um, and creating them within Google Drive because you won't have that option to use Microsoft once we move to Chromebooks. So you click on Create. If you click on Documents, that's very similar to Microsoft Word. Presentations, very similar to Microsoft PowerPoint. These are the two things we're going to concentrate on today. And then Folders, how to make folders within Google Drive. So if you click on this icon right here, this is a great how-to that takes you step-by-step step through folders. And so I have made a lot of things in this presentation clickable. All right. And so we can take you through how to make folders. It's very easy to do. Um, matter of fact, if we go back right here where it says create, you can make a folder just by clicking on that. And then I'll go over some other um, information with you on how to do that. So let's go into folders. Oops. And I'm going to get out of this and take you into, let's see, let's go into, and let's look at some folders. So I'm going to go into Google Drive. And this is not my neat <laughs> Google account where I have nice, neat folders. But if I go into my Google Drive, I have folders here, and I can simply bring up the folders that I have. So here's a sample folder, and yeah, let's do this again. All right, so let's go in and create a document. So if I go in and create a document, I can just say I want to name the document. I can say sample document. Click OK. I can always go back and change the name of this document any time I want to. And then I just type like I normally would. And do you see that there's lots of information up here that looks very similar to Microsoft Office that you can work with. Notice I'm not going to click Save or anything on this. I'm just going to close out. And there's my sample document. And I can just bring it in. The nice thing about Google is I don't have to save anything. All right, now I'm going to create a presentation. And this is similar to Microsoft PowerPoint. I can change the backgrounds if I want, or I can choose different images for the background. I can choose a layout or a theme. What I want that to be. Here I can choose a theme. So maybe I want that. And then I can just start working on it like I would a normal PowerPoint presentation. I can click the plus button to add more slides. And I can add anything in here that I want to add. Okay. And again, I haven't saved it. Let's title it first, though. Sample PowerPoint. Okay, I'm just going to close out. Notice I didn't save it, but it's going to be there. So I can find it by looking for it, sample PowerPoint, or I can look in most recent, and there that is. And let's say I want that. It's not in a folder right now. Let's say I want it in a folder. So I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to say oops, sample folder to created the folder and so now I'm going to come down here here's my sample folder too I can click I can change the color of that folder and now I want this PowerPoint to go into my green sample folder so I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to click on move to I'm going to find my nice bright green sample folder and move it in there. So now when I click on my sample folder, there's my PowerPoint presentation. Now if you want whatever you create to automatically be inside of your folder, make sure your folder is open before you create and then it will automatically put that into that folder for you. 
but it's very easy to move it into the folder um, after you've created that as well. How do you upload? Again, just go in, Files, and you can upload whatever you want, whether it's a picture or a document. And you see, really, all I have is pictures here because I make everything in Google Drive, so I don't have anything to upload from my desktop, I don't think. No, I don't because I do everything on Google Drive. This is my offline Google Drive. You can work on your Google Documents offline. So that means if you don't have access to the internet, you still have access to all your Google Drive folders and you can actually work on them and make changes to them. And then the changes will apply automatically when you're connected to the internet again. And we'll look into that at a future date and time, a future presentation. So I'm jumping ahead. All right, so good thing this is a recording and you can go back and forth as needed with how to <laughs> upload and create. Here are some resources that I've gathered. Um, this is all things Google Pinterest page. And in here I've tried to pin all things Google. So there's lots of great tutorials out here that I think might be helpful to you as we progress. And then I also have an HHS device agnostic ideas board. I would love to add you as a collaborator. So if you would like for me to add you as a pinner to this board, please let me know because we need to all be sharing our ideas for device agnostic technologies. I've started putting um, some things on here already, but I do need your help in making this something we can all use and contribute to at, in a collaborative manner. And that would be super awesome. If you have questions, I'm always on Twitter at Nikki D. Robertson. But if you are at school, email me or just come to the library and see me. If you need me to um, assist you with any of this, I'm always happy to do so. Oh, I hope this made sense. Our next PD session will go over Google Forms and spreadsheets and how you can use those in your classroom. So if you have any ideas you'd like to share with me to include in the presentation, I'd be more than willing to add that in and excited to learn what you're doing in your classroom because really this is about you and I want to feature you, not me. <laughs> and. There you go. So I hope that this was helpful. For those of you who already know what to do, thank you anyway for paying attention. And I'll see you next time around. Goodbye.